We have something new on the homestead. We have got well. All right, guys, well, we have finally got some quail back. So my mother-in-law was incubating a ton of eggs for us. It was probably 100, maybe over 100. And right now, I'm going to say they move so fast, it's really hard to count them. But this is our newer uh, brooder. So one that we just put up, and we have another one over there with probably about 40. Then they brought like 20 here. So, you know, that's giving us about 60 something. I think she has more that's hatching. So in the end, I think we're gonna end up with about 70 to 80 quail. So this is our second set. And uh, I'm just gonna focus on here because there's less quail in this one. So it's easier to talk about stuff. And so this is just quail 101 basics. So um, she has a certain type of incubator and I'm going to put it right here and check and see if some of any of them have hatched. Nope, so they're all good. Okay, close it. Oh wait, I didn't roll them. <laughs> Open it up again. She probably rolled them this morning. But on the quails, we just roll them. Just roll them a little bit. Uh, they say just kind of take your hand and just roll them across. All the old timers say that. And then they're good. Okay, that one felt a little heavy. It's probably gonna hatch next. And you see it blinks, and then it goes right back on there. Okay, let's check this one. There's nothing. Nothing, okay. She probably rolled them, but just in case. Hopefully I'll get some video of some that have hatched. They're gonna be gone, so. Oh, I really rolled that one. It's probably a little too much. All right. So once your quail eggs hatch, okay, then you need to have your brooder set up. If you've watched the chick video, then, and I will link that up above here too, but once you, uh, just like with the chicken chicks, you need to have the brooder set up. Well, for quail, I learned from the ag teacher one year that learned it from an old timer, he said, <laughs> was to use sand. And we had tried to uh, hatch egg, um, quail eggs before and use like shavings and newspaper and they just were not successful well uh the older gentleman told the ag teacher who said use sand and so they have actually scratched it up and gotten like some some uh dirt or like leaf particles and like just the junk out of it but when I first put the sand in here it was really smooth and it was nothing but white sand and then they just kind of pick on it as they walk through it and stuff like that but we actually, you can get play sand, like from Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot, something like that. Or if you have a sandy area in your yard, like we do, um, we are, as you know, on a slope. So we get sand from everybody else around us. And so we will have just like piles of sand. So we go out there, dig it, put it in a five gallon bucket and then bring it inside and put sand along the bottom. And because it's got that sandiness there, and it's really light for them, it's easier for them to walk on. So you can see there where, this is normally what it looks like when we first put it in. But it's just so much easier for them to walk on and it holds the temperature better. So it's warm and they love that. So the sand will be warm before we put them in here. And these are gonna be smaller than the other brooder. And then we use a coffee, I have a certain type of coffee I like to use. Um, and then we take their food and we put it in one of these. And it doesn't start out flat like this. This is actually too dry. And I've already wet it once today. But we will take regular food crumbles and actually wet it because they are so small on their little beaks that it's hard for them to get a hold of the big chunks. So you actually wet it for them and put it in there and they love it that way. And so I'll show you how we do that. Okay, you're also gonna need a different water from your chick water. So this is a special type of water that is thin and um, it has a thin lip right there and it's not as big as the chicks because they are uh, so tiny. Now these technically are chicks, but just to separate them for when I'm talking, the quail are so tiny and their little beaks are so tiny that they need a smaller one to keep them from drowning. And so um, I'll show you how we clean and fill those in. Oh, 
Oh, look at them. See, they're all over there sleeping right here because their bellies are full. I just filled up their food. So you watch me do that, wet it, and so they'll get there and they'll eat and stuff. And then once their bellies are full, they'll come over here in the warm and they'll just kind of lay there and go to sleep. The only bad thing about this is they do just like chicks and they will squish each other. And so I didn't, I don't have my round edges in here, which I actually need to go find them and put them in here because we did have some that actually, I know that's why they passed away is they got stuck like that. So I'm going to go get that, put that in there, get them some fresh sand. So just like the chickens, you have to replenish their sand because it gets just nasty with their poop and stuff and their waste. And so I'm going to put a fresh layer across there and build it up a little bit and then get them a fresh brooder set up. Now I still have this in our mud room, just like the chicks, because I like to listen to them. When they're chirping, they're telling you something. They're either cold, they're too hot, they don't have water, they want some food, they're just not happy for some reason. So you have to figure out what they're trying to tell you. And you kind of know when it's just like an inquiring, like, hey, who else is out there? Uh, you want to talk to me? Or if it's like, okay, I need something, I need something. And so you learn the difference. And when they're inside with us and here in the mudroom, then I can listen and I can hear what they're telling, you know, and what they need, where if they were outside, I wouldn't be able to hear them. And these are so super tiny compared to the chicks. Like I check on them multiple times a day. They're right here in the main path. So I have my funky chair, making sure it doesn't fall. They're here in the paint, uh, the main path of the stairs so that way you know as we're going through all day going outside i just look in on them make sure everybody's okay and that's just the way i like it right now now if we got in some huge operation where we had a ton of them or this is a constant thing of you know raising chicks then possibly we would have like a brooder house or something set up but right now i just like the small thing like this and i think it's really simple and it's really easy and it's convenient for me and it serves our needs so what you see here is that is our driveway and then we get run off of this hill the hill beside our house Ooh, i keep zooming in on my finger beside our house and then actually some out of the woods here on this hill and Carl's worked on it just create a huge gully in here when I say a gully like one of the kids could stand in there and all you could see was the top of their head so what he's been doing is taking all the trees he's been cutting down the extra that we can't put in the wood chipper and sticking those in the gully to stop some of this huge washout but it's also letting us get sand. So the sand stops there. There's a sand spot here. And the kids will come out here and play sometime. And then that big sand spot over there that it's easy for me to get the sand in the bucket. And yeah, it has some debris in it, but I've noticed that the if the quails get a hold of it, they just kind of tote it around and stuff, but they don't really try to eat it. They figure out pretty quick it's not food. They're not just stupid animals. Um, so I don't worry too much about that. But we also have, that was a huge gully washout spot that he's just piled and piled stuff into because there is a creek back there, which the summer has taken it over and it hasn't been bush hogged since the spring. So there's like a little runoff creek back there. But just trying to stop some of that drainage and that is a challenge. I mean, you can see how the, there's a hill there. The house is on half of the hill, then it goes down. It gets even lower down in here. And it's just part of the challenge you have when you live on a huge slope is drainage and stuff and how you can handle that. But we figured out there's not enough. There's so much sand coming from everything uh, and not enough soil buildup here that the blackberries didn't survive. So that's a goal next year is we got to start bringing the soil, putting that in there, amending this whole area so that we can grow stuff and then figure out how to keep the sand out of there and to actually build good soil and not it wash away down here. So those are the challenges we have and that's our, um, that's some wood chips we have left, not a whole lot. And then that is one of our huge compost where it's just cardboard and paper and animal waste right there that we just keep rolling over and over and all that'll get moved up into 
the orchard area where you see that fence right there. So, all right, well, let's go get the sand into the coil. Okay, so these guys have got some fresh sand now and they're feeling good. So that also cuts down on the smell too because just like chickens, they're going to have a smell after a while just because there's so much hoop in there pretty much. Um, and then you put that fresh sand down in there. It's going to make it clean for them. You're going to clean up the smell, have less waste, and you just keep adding it. So I have my bucket. I went and got some more sand and it'll be ready for next time. So double there and I won't have to go out and get it because it just keeps getting hotter around here and stuff. But I just wanted to go over some other things, just some basics. Um, let's start off with like the incubation. When they come out of the eggs, people describe it as a piece of popcorn. And that is exactly true. That is so true because if you watch a quill egg hatch, they do. They just like pop out of there like a, a kernel popping into a piece of popcorn and it is hilarious and amazing. Um, so that is true. They are not super loud. I've mentioned it before in our quail um, run when we did our big epic quail pen, how they are really almost, I feel like they are also a gateway animal into homesteading because they are the perfect homestead bird for you if you are in a neighborhood and noise is an issue or size or if you have a problem like somebody's going to say something because you're, you know, cleaning your meat birds or something like that. Uh, quail are super quiet. They make, these are bob whites and they have a different sound than the cornix quail. And the bob whites have this <whistles> to them. And it just sounds like a songbird. So, um, you know, people in your neighborhood aren't really gonna know what that is. And so you can get away with having quail in a backyard super easy. Easy maintenance, water feed, that's it. Now, the downside to quail, they are not friendly. As you can see, they are very, very skittish. They're like this the whole time until adulthood. Um, I've had one that I had out in the pen out there that would kind of come towards me and stuff, but it took weeks and weeks, and he still was not that friendly. So they are very, very skittish. This is not an animal you're going to cuddle with. This is not an animal that's going to be your friend. So just keep that in mind. They are strictly going to be for getting eggs and getting meat from, and that's it. Um, because they stay this way pretty much their whole lives. Um, and that's the thing when you have kids, they're awesome to watch and they're cute to watch, but it's not a good thing to be holding them all the time because they are so super tiny. You saw that at the beginning of the video. Um, you know, I have four in my hands and I probably could have fit two more. So you could probably have six tiny little birds in your hand and they just stay really small. And that's not great for young ones. These are super fast too. As you can see, they are fast. When they get away from you, it's hard to catch them from the whole time when they're little to when they're an adult. It's hard to catch them. So keep that in mind. You've got to have something that they're not going to get out of. If they get out, pretty much count on probably not getting them back. Um, the best way to get them back, though, we have found is wait till dark. They usually come back looking for food or water because, you know, they're not used to surviving on their own. And they'll sit beside the cage and you can get a flashlight and kind of blind them a little bit, like keep it on them and get a net and cover them up and that's the best way to actually catch them if they escape um but besides that they are super easy i actually recommend them over chickens uh just for the fact if you're looking for meat and eggs they're a great combo it does take five quail eggs to equal one chicken egg though but if you have so many quail that shouldn't be a problem uh, if you have a small space, these are the perfect birds for you. Easy, easy maintenance. The only issue is them getting away from you. That will be the hardest part. And if you can get over the fact that, you know, they're not going to be cuddly and they're not going to be pets. So. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about quail here on our homestead and maybe learned about breeding some quail yourself if you're thinking about getting those for your backyard garden or your homestead. And it doesn't matter what size your homestead is. Remember, these are great for small homesteads, small gardens, especially if you live in a neighborhood or even a big homestead. They're great animals to have and at least try for a little bit. So we are definitely going to keep them from now on. 
Uh, if you haven't seen that Epic Quill uh, cage video, definitely check it out. I think I'll tag it at the very end of this video and you can click right on it and go see it. If you would like to see more, definitely subscribe. So we're going to keep these videos coming every time we add a new animal, every time we're doing stuff in the garden. I'm going to bring you along with me and hopefully, you know, you can follow and see what we're doing, me and the family. You can subscribe. So you can like, which is a thumbs up. So if you'll give us a thumbs up, you can also share on social media. If that's something that you could do for us, that would be awesome. Uh, you can send it in a message. You can do Facebook. Uh, I think you can even do Twitter. I don't know. We'll see. But um, if you want to learn more details and things about the garden, homesteading, animals, just stuff that we're doing, um, putting up food, how to cook the different food, go ahead and go to our website. So our website is wildwoodwonder.com and you can join our Wildwood Homestead community. And in that community, what that is, is a newsletter. The newsletter goes out every two weeks and then I put two blogs a week in on the website. So when you log onto the website and get there, there will be a little pop-up and it asks you to join the community. Go ahead and put your email in there and you will start getting those newsletters and just let you know that when new blogs are posted. And then you can go ahead and read the older blogs that are on there by going to the blog page and all of them are listed there and just start seeing, you know, if you can learn anything it's about cooking it's about the animals that are here on the homestead it's about the natural wildlife that's around us it's about gardening it's about homesteading with your family gardening with your family so definitely join us on there we would appreciate it and i will see y'all next time bye